big and successful meeting. Native Authority police were far too few, and they did nothing to remove the organized young hoodlums, stirring up passions at the edge of the crowd till it was too late. For a time, it looked ugly. quietly dispersed, perhaps remembering the previous riot. This time, nobody killed, only a few injured. Awilova is a man of steady nerves. He was ill when he appeared at the rally, but he had to appear, otherwise he would have been called a coward by his enemies. By morning, he felt better. There was a considerable riot when you spoke here yesterday. Was this an organized thing put on by the opposition? My own view is that it had been it has been uh, it had been organized by some people. You don't think it could have been just uh, that was not it wasn't spontaneous. In a town like Kano, you have a lot of loafers who can easily be made to do any dirty work by uh, by giving them a few shillings or something. Does this mean the campaign as a whole is going to get more violent as it goes on? Uh, I don't think so. My experience is that uh, you have loafers mainly in the cities. They don't uh, exist in the villages. And so far, my campaigns in the villages have been very successful, even though there are no police protection at all. You attended one, anyway. There was no riot when the Sardana staged his Northern People's Congress rally in Kano a few days later. Nobody would have dared try to break up that one. But it was significant that the Sardana came out at all. He had said he wouldn't have to campaign in this election. The threat of Iwo's helicopter tour in the north may have changed his mind. Politicians who remember the Truman-Dewey election of 48 don't take victory for granted. There is no need for me to do any election campaign here. In the old days, the Emir of Kano was known as the chief warrior of the Sultan of Sokoto. And today, I regard all people of Kano as the warriors of the Sardona of Sokoto. Sardana spoke about 10 minutes, no longer. He didn't have to speak longer. Kano was in the bag for his northern party. In this province, the Emir of Kano is spiritual leader among his people. His honor guard of drummers, horsemen, soldiers is a spectacle for impressing the citizenry whenever he leaves or returns to his palace. His powers have oriental roots. According to local legend, the coats of mail of his honor guard came from the Crusades. But today, another kind of crusade, a political crusade from the south, is causing the emir and his political colleagues greater concern. It was in the lavish medieval splendor of the emir's palace, with the emir himself a courteous but silent host, that we spoke with the Sardana of Sokotu, the supreme political boss of the northern region. The country was shattered in the first place by intertribal wars and so on. Now, although we don't have intertribal wars now, but still, you see, you find some sort of frictions between especially major political parties. Now, I don't think, I mean, now, for instance, a gentleman came to the north here. He did a lot of things contrary to northern traditions and customs, and that arouses a lot of feeling. Now, for somebody to come in a, in a plane right over the top of the Emir's house here, to drop some leaflets, well, that is contrary to our customs here. In the first place, the house is Pada. And secondly, well, we don't know why should he look into the house of another man, which is not uh, our own tradition. Well, he did that sort of thing in many places, and that has roused a lot of feelings against him, and also against his Yoruba tribe. I assume, sir, you are talking now about the helicopter campaign of the Action Group. Is yes, I am, indeed. What is your principal complaint about the Action Group? Uh, well, in actual fact, I have nothing against Action Group, except they are more or less people, I mean, who don't come in the open to tell you what they mean or what they feel. I would rather, like, live with a friend who talks who, uh, straight instead of a person always in circumlocution, which is action group. 
Several years ago, some young educated Muslims rebelled against the powerful Northern People's Congress, convinced it would never lead the North to equality with the other regions in modern progress. They formed NAPU, Northern Elements Progressive Union, and allied with Zeke's party of the Eastern region. This party finds support among the Talakawa, the impoverished peasant masses. Their leader, the frail, dedicated former teacher Malam Amino Kano of a prominent family. Campaign issues, breaking the power of the emirs, democratizing the native authority, development for the north. We have colleges, we have big airports, we have um, hotels, we have all these civilizing effects in this country. Yet the NPC wants us to continue looking at the, to the past. While we of the Nepal who say we are a party of tomorrow, we believe in tomorrow. We believe in the young children of today. We are prepared to borrow something from the past, but not prepared to go back to the past and then think of the future. Nepal is poor. Its headquarters in Kano is a hangout for hangers-on. Here, Malam Amino holds his meetings, issues orders, writes his speeches. The ruling powers consider him a left-winger and a troublemaker. Is there any communist problem here in Nigeria? I don't think, I don't, I don't think of communism in this country. Ah, right. yeah. people uh, say, oh, so-and-so is communist, because, you see, the, 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 there's, the, there's one trouble about uh, our politics here in relation with the British. Any time uh, an African becomes uh, very loud and becomes very extreme against colonialism, then he's branded communist. But if he, uh, even if an African says he's a communist, he's only saying he's a communist in order to impress the British for independence. Not because he believes in communism or anything of this nature. We don't know it. We, we, we are more concerned with hunger and poverty and disease, how to do our with them, than with communism. This young Muslim maverick has his pet crusade, the emancipation of women. The North is the only region where women do not have the right to vote. So rules Muslim tradition. Malam Amino is out to break it. This demonstration is an echo of the women's suffrage era in America, shades of Susan B. Anthony. These women worked hard for the ncnc Nepu Alliance. Many of them belong to the Ibu tribe, some school teachers by profession. They worship their crusading heroes, Malam Amino, and their beloved Zeke, whose portrait adorns their dresses. In their simple alphabet pageant, a cross between their tribal ceremonials and a kind of ballad for Nigerians, they talk of Roosevelt's four freedoms. The four freedoms of common humanity are as much elements as of man's need, as air and sunlight, bread and salt. Many Americans have forgotten what the four freedoms are. These people have not. Do you stand for paradise? which we shall join on October 1, 1960, when NCNC and NOKU Alliance will usher Nigeria into independence. Say, Z! 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 You are watching the Freedom Explosion, as CBS reports the birth of a new nation through its first popular national election, what H.G. Wells called democracy ceremonial. Its feast, its greatest function.